What is going on, guys? My name is Sheets, and welcome to Feeds Mindset, episode number nine with the wonderful Kinetic. Thank you so much for being on, Kinetic. How are you? I'm great. How's it going? It is going. I really appreciate your time being able to be on the podcast. I'm really excited to get into it. Uh, me and you are, you know, like we was talking a bit before, we're, we're mutual friends, but I'm not going to be fake and, and say that I, I know <laughs> you and I'm your best friend. Um, yeah. But I, I do genuinely appreciate just the time being able to sit here and talk with me and just to have an hour just to kind of chill and and just be able to talk about yourself. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, what, what currently goes on in, in the life of Kinetic? You know, who is Kinetic as a streamer <laughs> and to your community? Yeah. Um, well, me just as a streamer, I mainly play Call of Duty. That's what I originally started playing whenever I started streaming about a year, year and a half ago. But since then, because of the state of Call of Duty nowadays, <laughs> um, I have branched out to a bunch of other different games, so now I consider myself a variety streamer, which I personally like a lot better because it just allows me to have more variety, obviously, yeah. in what I do. Um, and I think it connects me with more people as well. So, um, variety streamer, I consider myself an advocate for women in gaming and also plus size people in gaming. So, those two things are also very important to me and near and dear to my heart. So, um, yeah. but yeah, that's pretty much the. A little spiel about me <laughs> yeah definitely no i mean I, I appreciate it and you know i definitely do want to get into those topics i definitely want to uh, talk about things that you want to talk about and things that are For meaningful sure. and, and, and impactful but you know until we before we get to that you know let's kind of talk about the the come up of kinetic you know where where kinetic came from and not not really as a streamer you know we'll get to that after but just how you came to be in gaming and understanding the space and then obviously coming from nothing, being a gamer, and then getting into COD, which is kind of your, not really your mainstream thing now, but, you know, it clearly was for quite a couple months. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, I've always played games. I've been playing video games since I was a little kid. I actually just posted a picture on Twitter of me on one of those really old, big and bulky <laughs> computers <laughs> from, like, the early 2000s, and I was playing a game on there. So it's like, I've always been a gamer, um, but... You know, as I got into like high school, I stopped playing as much, but then I really got back into it when I was in college and when COVID hit, because when COVID hit, I was like a junior in college. Mm -hmm. So really got back into it when all that happened, we were all stuck inside um, and I fell in love with it again. I had my PlayStation 4. I played Fortnite all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I played, um, I had a best friend in college, and he was obsessed with video games. He had a collection, and he would just lend me games, and I would just go <laughs> and play them on my PlayStation. So, um, favorite games, The Last of Us and the Uncharted series. I absolutely really? love those games. Yes, they're so good. Um, so, yeah, but then me and him played Fortnite, and then me and him played um warzone that's kind of how i started to get into cod and then cold war came out that was the first cod that i bought myself i had played other cods previously but always on somebody else's account mm -hmm. so i didn't have to buy it yeah <laughs> but i bought i bought call of duty um my first one was cold war and i absolutely loved it and that's where i met um, two of my best friends, online best friends, and they got me into the competitive side of Call of Duty. Mm. So that's when I started watching the CDL and playing competitive myself. And then I started streaming around that time just because I needed something to do. I needed something to keep my mind off of, you know, everything that was going on yeah, up here. <laughs> so it was kind of an escape for me, um, and it was something for me to look forward to doing and something to kind of keep me excited about living. Um, so it, streaming for me is just a really important part of my life now. And it's something that I really look forward to doing. Um, and I'm getting more into content creation now, uploading on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, mm -hmm. all the things. Um, and doing all of that too, I've just come to learn that I just really love doing this. It's yeah. something that, I think that I could do forever. So I, yeah. I'm really excited to have found something like that so early on in my life. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's awesome. And, you know, I, I'd kind of not really in like the gaming factor, but I had kind of the same come up, you know, so I was working for a call center when COVID had happened. Um, yeah. and, I, and my contract was, was some type of campground where they would just call and make reservations for like the big campgrounds that you'd go and chill out on. 
and um, I had the weekend off, and I had went to my sister's house. Um, she has an autistic son, and I think I think he was either five or six years old at the time. This was all the way back in, I think, 2020, I want to say, um, 2020, 2019. And so uh, she had bought him a trampoline for his birthday that was coming up. And so for the weekend, she was like, hey, she was like, I, you know, dad's not really feeling well, whatever. Do you mind coming over and building? And I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, he's, you know, he's my big man. Like, of course, I'll mm. come and build it for him. And so I was sitting there and I was building it. And we had just got done, like, putting, like, the last spring in and, you know, the tarp on and all that stuff. And then got a phone call from my boss. And I was like, hey, sir, how can I help you? And he was like, hey. And he was like, I'm really sorry. This is really awful. And this is going to be something really sad. But I have to let you go. And I was like, huh? Oh, and no. he was and he was like, yep, he was like, unfortunately, with COVID and the contract that we're on, all this is going down. And he was like, I, I'm so sorry. And, and I don't really have any words to tell you. You can come to the office and pick up all your paperwork. And I was like, you know, I was crying that day because um, me and my fiance had just like finally kind of got out on our own and was yeah. living and doing really well. And then I just lost my job all of a sudden. And then it was COVID. So not even the fact of me kind of being in a small town and it hard to find jobs, but now it's COVID. So there's no fucking way I'm finding a job, you know? <laughs> and yeah. so thankfully with the whole unemployment and everything, I, I ended up being unemployed for about three months and, and was able to draw from that. Um, and it ended up being, I think like two or $300 more than what I was with the ridiculous high that all that was at. Um, and so I saved up two paychecks and I bought a pre-built PC for like 800 bucks and I paid cash nice. for it. Um, and that's how I'd kind of got into Valorant. And so that's kind of what started my, uh, my PC gaming career. I'd always been a gamer. I always played COD and that's, you know, how I got my name feeds. Um, I, mm -hmm. I got up from Call of Duty Ghost. I, my original alias was Random Gamer because I didn't know what to call myself. Um, yep. and then, uh, there was a team called XGN Exiled Gaming Network that had reached out to me, just a normal search and rescue lobby. And they was like, Hey, we think that you're a good player. Do you want to join our team? The only stipulation is you have to one V one. I was like, fucking bet. I was like, that's easy. And so I one V one and I won. And because I won and they allowed me in the team, they was like, okay, since you won, you know, here's a $15 Microsoft points card. You just have to change your name, but it has to have XG in it. And I was like, okay. And they was like, but it can't be random gamer. That's too long. I was like, fuck. I was like, well, what do I, what do I do? And I was like, well, I was like, I like sniping. I like seeing my name in the kill feed and all the reactions. And, and that's kind of where feeds was born because I just, I love seeing how many times that I could be in the kill feed, how fast yeah. I could do it, how I could get that edge over people. And I mean, obviously even now, like I do that shit in fucking ranked, you know, like I still, I snipe and, you know, comp and ranked and, and still yep. somehow do it against people that go pro. Um, so yeah, so it, that, that definitely <laughs> sparked my career. Back mm -hmm. when, when COVID had hit, it was kind of the same thing for me. That's that's when gaming became like serious because I got to tap into the PC world because, I mean, you can easily grow off of console and get where you want to be, but the moment you finally get a PC, I mean, if you argue that PC is not an additive for a streaming career, I mean, you're completely wrong. It, it adds so yeah. many more layers and connections and stuff um, to it. And obviously, I mean, just now, I mean, that was years ago, and I think... I think Xbox just now released the feature to broadcast your stuff through Discord. Like, you know, and yeah. this is now, you know, not even back then. And uh, yeah, the, exactly. the, and then The Last of Us, you know, funny that you mentioned that game. I, I never got too much into Uncharted. I just never became a, a big fan of that one. But when The Last of Us had came out, um, I did a series on that. And I, I was working a full-time job at the time. And I would literally work, come home, do whatever for an hour. And I would play until I felt tired enough to go to bed. I would have a trash day at work and then I would come straight back and I would play the last of us. Yep. Um, and that was right. Back to what I did. <laughs> and that was right before um, everything had kind of changed for me. So I never got the opportunity to play the last of us two when it came out. Cause it wasn't PC allowed, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, the last of us part one was a super great game. And if I could forget it and play it again, I definitely would. Um, but I mean, as far as like my favorite games and stuff, I tell everybody the same thing. I mean, my my favorite game of all time is always going to be Final Fantasy twelve. Um, it, it's kind of a, a deeper, more meaning to it. And then my second one that I would, without the empathetic in it, um, Fallout New Vegas. I love that game. I could play it over and over and over. It's a just a great sick okay. campaign game. 
Um, but Final Fantasy twelve is always, especially for Final Fantasy fans, is always like a curveball. Like, wow, like, oh my god, you like twelve? What about seven? What about ten? It's like, fuck <laughs> off. Like, I like twelve. Okay, I like what I like. It uh, it had got me through a tough time. Um, back in two thousand and ten, uh, my family we couldn't afford our electric bill, and we had a generator running the house, and my dad accidentally threw a blanket over it, and it caused it to explode, and the house had burned oh my down. God. Um, the house had burnt down and most of our garage was suffered. The whole house was intact, but it was just all filled with smoke. Um, and so my PS2 survived in some games and stuff. And that was my, uh, I think, I think I was either in sixth or seventh grade. And that was like my summer as a kid. Cause like summer had just started when all that happened too. And so, wow. um, so being able to play, Final Fantasy XII, it was one of my only games that actually worked, and my PS2 somehow had survived, and I had a white PS2, and, like, half of it had, like, a big smoke mark over it, and I was in a bedroom with my dad, um, and I was playing on this little box screen TV, and just somehow, when summer started until summer ended, like, that was the only game I played, um, and that was obviously way before I knew anything about this community or anything at all. Um, but it had such a, a bigger meaning to me because I was, I was so depressed. I was a kid, you know, going outside, yeah. biking, four wheeling, fishing, all this stuff. And, and all of that got thrown out the window. Couldn't go see my friends cause now mom and dad didn't have any money to take us anywhere and stuff. Um, and just, I was able to play that game and forget about everything. And, and so it'll always hold something, uh, true to my heart for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's just kind of. Kind of what The Last of Us and Uncharted was for me when I first started playing those games. Um, in college, depressed, COVID was happening. So, um, but I actually, I didn't get my first PC until after I started streaming. So really? I started streaming from my PS4. Um, well, I had my PS4 hooked up to a very old laptop that mm-hmm. I had. So I guess you could say I had a computer, but it was a laptop. Yeah. But, so it was hooked up to my laptop, and that's how I started streaming for probably the first six months. And then I got a very basic pre built computer for like eight, nine hundred mm. bucks, you know? Um, and then I just upgraded to this one maybe three, four months ago. I think I got it in like May. So uh, it's. It's been crazy, like the difference. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm very excited to continue with this big mama. Yeah, PC right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would um, definitely, I would definitely agree. I mean, the the PC that I have now, you know, I had so I had the pre built that I told you about. The mm-hmm. downside is that pre built eventually ended up having a faulty graphics card, and I had to send it. Head. I had to send it back, and then I had to get a new one. And then, you know, got that whatever. And so then it finally came around the time where I was making a bit more money. And I had a, a, a guy, his name's Wizzy. Shout out to Wizzy, Joe Ray, whatever he wants to be called. He's not in the space anymore. Um, he's from Belgium. Mm-hmm. And I had knew him from a sniping team uh, called Prime District. It's a, and well, I guess my profile picture is Photoshop. So the one that I had before it with the white jersey that said Prime District and I was smiling mm-hmm. in it. Um, that team that I was a part of, he was the owner of. And he ran a vape shop and then did PC building on the side of it. Um, oh, cool. And he told me, he was like, listen, man, he was like, if you can afford the funds, and he was like, you don't have to pay me anything. I just want to see you happy. He's like, I will tell you what you need, and I will help you set it up if you need. And he helped me throughout the whole process. And then when I got the PC, he sent me a video and I was good the whole way until it came to all the different like connections and, and ports and yeah. stuff because I didn't know because it wasn't marked right. And so then I yeah. called him and like two, three hours later, we was in a Discord and he was helping me through everything. And like <laughs> he was getting so pissed off because I'd be like, it's right here. And he's like, what the fuck is that? I was like, it's right here. And like <laughs> I, I, my PC like brain at the time, I couldn't explain what he needed to understand. Right. Um, yeah. But I don't... <sighs> Wizzy, I don't know if you're ever here in this comedy more, man, but he's he's helped me so much more than I can imagine. But when I upgraded to a, a custom PC from a pre-built, I mean, it's it's the one that I have now. I've had it for definitely over a year for sure going on, too, and it has been a fantastic PC. I mean, COD, I run at about 140, 150 frames. Shout out to Trilla for optimizing my PC um, on fucking Valorant. I run 500 frames. I mean, it's it's a great PC. <laughs> Um, and, and it allows me to not only do everything, but even just have this podcast today. It, it's allowed me a lot. So having that transition and being able to be 
in the position financially to make that upgrade, it is 100% worth it if you have that motivation to do better. 100%. 100%. So, but yeah, so I'm glad to, you know, to get to know about your, your come up and everything about your gaming and stuff. And, and it's awesome to know that mm-hmm. kind of gaming had, had kind of grew more to you through college. And, and I know that it kind of seems like to you, you know, you said it was, it was a lot of depression going on and it was kind of an escape and stuff, but it really seems like it, it turned from an escape to like your saving grace because I mean, now that's, that's kind of, you know, what you're built upon now and you yeah. clearly have tons of fun every time you stream and you even posted a, a little <laughs> picture just a couple minutes ago before this podcast and you was geeking, just having a good time <laughs> chilling in your setup. Like that's what it's about. Um, it is. So, it really is. so before we get to the, you know, the current day topics and stuff, I, I asked this question to everybody as well as, you know, so for the name, you know, kinetic. So take me through how kinetic came to be and how you even got your name. <laughs> Yeah, so I I love I love this story. So um, I don't know if you ever did these kind of games, but when you were in school and you had like a new class or a new group or something, and you had to play name games, um, this is kind of like that. So we had to play a name game where we had to say our name and then an adjective or a word okay. that started with the same letter of our name. Yeah, I got you. So now. mine, the <laughs> one since my name starts with a K, my name is Kennedy. There's not a lot of words I can use. <laughs> um, so my go-to was always kinetic, kinetic Kennedy. Um, and that just kind of transitioned into when I started getting back into gaming. My original gamer tag was kinetic, the correct way of spelling it, K-I-N-E-T-I-C dash K-19, because 19 is my favorite number. <laughs> um, so that was my original gamer tag. And then when I seriously thought about starting to stream, I was like, well, that's a horrible name. I don't want to use that yeah. for you know, like my streaming career. So um, I started asking around, actually, because I was in a couple of Facebook groups, you know, when people used to do that, be in Facebook Mm -hmm. groups to (laughs) talk about gaming. Um, I was in some of those and I asked people, I was like, hey, like, I really want to keep Kinetic in my name. And but I don't know, like, how to keep it in there without it just being like (laughs) boring. Um, And somebody in one of those Facebook groups came up with kinetic how it's spelled now yeah which is you know kind of taking the word kinetic and my name and smushing them together (laughs) um and then i put the in front of it because you know the the one and only yeah exactly stupid (laughs) so that's kind of how my name came to be and i and Thankfully, on literally every platform there is on the planet, the kinetic was never taken. So I think it was meant for me. I, you loser. Personally. I, I got so annoyed when I first realized that everybody in, the, in their mother had the name Feeds. I was so pissed off. <laughs> I, I couldn't have it anywhere oh, yeah. as I went. Even my own gamer tag, I couldn't call it Feeds. I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world. And that, that's how I eventually got to Feeds XD. Because I was like, all right, you know what? Like, if, if it's so much of a problem, I'll at least laugh at it and put a fucking XD at the end. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, you you talked about 19 being your favorite number. Is there a story behind that? Or you just ended up locking the number? I just ended up... So, I used to play soccer when I was younger. And mm-hmm. that was my... Just the kind of the number I was given. And it's just kind of a number that stuck with me. Um, so my favorite numbers are 3 and 19. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Those are my yeah. two favorite numbers. My 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 mom's favorite number is 3. Um, it's because she has three kids. And I guess that's always stuck with her. My favorite number is 7. And it's for the most stupidest reason ever. Um, so back when... Seven? <laughs> yeah. Back when I was uh, back when I was a kid in school, you know, when you had those like addition and, and multiplication stuff or whatever, I learned that there was nothing that you could multiply to get to the number seven. And I don't know why, but I was like, that's my number. I don't and it's I mean, uh, it's not really helped me out like any at all, like having that lucky number. It's just you could do seven times one. Nah, that don't count. That don't count. <laughs> that's, that's cheating. That's cheating. You should get PC. Yeah. You get PC checked for that one. I don't I don't like that one. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, three, my, my number, favorite number being three is kind of the same because it's, I have two parents and me, I'm an only child, so it's just the three of us as our little family, so that's kind of why three is my favorite number, yeah. I even have it tattooed on me. Oh, that's three, sick. Three, three, three. That's cool. So. <laughs> that's but cool. Yeah, so. Awesome. All right, well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to, to get to know that. I mean, how do you how do you feel going back from from college and you get in the streaming and you get your PC and you start understanding these games? Your first COD, for whatever reason, is Warzone for a little bit. 
Um, <laughs> so how how all of that coming to be thinking about kinetic back then versus now kinetic with a community that's in a team that's aspiring that has plans and you have plans yourself of big things coming up. How, how does that feel to know that that's you now? It, it like I said, it turned more of an escape to now. That's that's who kinetic is. Yeah, it's honestly sometimes I forget to think about it because mm-hmm. um, you know you're so busy thinking about the future and worrying about you know what's going to happen you know, all this stuff that you have to stress about, you kind of forget where you came from and you forget how far you've come. Yeah. Um. So I think, I mean, this has kind of been great for me because you're forcing me to think about it. <laughs> Say um, it. So, <laughs> no, I, I really do. I really do love it. I think it's really cool to see how I started um, streaming on Twitch. I had, you know, barely two viewers, and yeah. one of them was my mom. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> shout out to mom. <laughs> shout out, mom. Mama Kinetic. Love you. Um, but yeah, so starting from there and then to now, um, I'm streaming on Kick now. Mm-hmm. Um, kick.com slash the Kinetic. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm streaming on there. Um, and I have a great little community that I love and who I hope loves me. <laughs> <laughs> But I and I've made so many friends. I think that's the really cool thing. Um, you know, when you were a kid, your parents always told you, you know, beware of strangers on the internet. Well, yeah. now I talk to them every single day. <laughs> you know, yeah. like um I think it's really cool how this community lets you build relationships with people. And what I have learned the hard way is that you're not gonna stay friends with those people forever, mm-hmm. most of them. Um, but the people that you do meet, they're there to teach you a lesson or to help you learn something about yourself. And then you can kind of take that to the next people that you meet and the next group of friends that yeah. you make. Um, it's always about bettering yourself. And I think, you know, seeing where I was to now, I'm a completely different person and I love the person that I'm yeah. becoming because 100%. of content creation. You go, girl. <laughs> you go, queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean i'm proud of you i mean it's sick you know Thank and you and you know definitely when we when i had first met you I, I could easily sense you know that bit of awkwardness you know before you had started your cod side and, and getting into the comp scene you know for that little bit before now you mm-hmm. being a variety streamer um but you know taking back a little bit on on what you just said you know i i've not technically ever thought about that point as a kid growing up like everybody can everybody can relate to that but i've like i myself have not thought about my mom or dad saying like don't talk to strangers on the internet you know don't Mm -hmm. go chase down the ice cream truck you know like all (laughs) all the weird things and it's like it's crazy because like for for me and my family like my mom does that every day now like her online Mm -hmm. is her friends and stuff uh mainly because you know they they both are disabled and can't get out you know as often and stuff um but you know same thing applies for us i mean you know we grew up in a time to say, hey, the world is changing, honey. The war is going to happen eventually. Stay away from the internet as much as you can and just Mm -hmm. be prepared for life. And now life has evolved and the internet and technology has evolved so hard that that technically is the make or break of the kind of adult that you are. Unless if you are so old fashioned that you're not tapped into it, the moment you get tapped into social media, I think that's the biggest pet peeve that I have specifically with older people and stuff where it's like, as soon as you start with social media, it's all downhill from there. And it's like, it's not the fact that it's downhill and that you got dragged in. It's the fact that you notice that it is a different opportunity to show you who you are. Because when you go into your nine to five and your college and your classes and you're, you know, being a doctor or whatever, nobody's going to ask you really, how's your day? They're just going to be like, Oh, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. Okay. And then you'll just keep walking on. And this environment and this streaming and this career that we're all in and prospering to be every single day, that's all it's about is how was your day? Because that's the very first question, how everybody starts their content. Oh, my day was good, but let me tell you guys about dumb old Jack that put me on a TikTok, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Um, and it's, it's crazy to think about that, you know, and that's kind of like this podcast for me, you know, I remember things like that too. And it's crazy to think about things, just something simple like that. Like it used to be about like dating apps and stuff like that back then is how they would tell us to like stay away. But now like I I genuinely, which I'm an adult, so obviously I'm not in school or anything anymore, but I, I just, I've never heard that phrase ever since I was a kid of honey, stay away from the internet. You don't hear that nowadays. And it's, 
like I said, like, and, and, and I, I genuinely think that's hilarious now because my mom is also always on the internet now. <laughs> and sometimes I just want to look at her and just be like, beware of people on the internet, mom. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Never know. Tisk, tisk, tisk. <laughs> you're, you're a hypocrite. But nah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's actually crazy because what you were saying is like people think it's downhill when she joins social mm. media. Well, it's a completely different world, you know? It's not even a hill anymore. It's like a whole other planet that you're on, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's really cool to see the different kind of people you meet, the different version of yourself that you can be on the internet. I mean, you can create yourself into whoever you want to be, but the way I like to see it is it's kind of like your inner child coming out that never got yeah. to come out before. Yeah, 100%. This is like your chance to kind of like... Get people to accept be you. Whoever you wanted to be. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever you want out there and people either have to accept it or they don't, you know? So, and not everybody's ever going to accept you. So you just kind of have to do you and whoever likes you likes you and whoever doesn't just tell them to fuck off and move on, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's crazy the way that all of that kind of comes to life. So, you know, now with all of that information past Canada, you got, you got your name, you start streaming and everything. Now mm -hmm. you are, and, and I, I want to prephrase this, you know, if somebody random is watching this, I don't like wording this topic this way, but that's how the world is about women creators. I can't stand mm -hmm. that that is how it is. I will always support women and I will always make sure that they are heard just as much as anybody else. So yeah. the reason why I asked this question in specific, uh, especially for Kinetic, it's different because she wants to talk about it. Most women, I could easily understand how it could be tough. And I'm not one to understand that at all. But if you want that heard, you know, I have no problem letting that happen. Um, so I just kind of wanted to make like a little mark here for people. Yeah. I'm not trying to do it for hot topics and, and to get it out there. It's, it's that it needs to be heard and it's a part of mental health and it needs to be normalized. So kinetic coming really into does. streaming, building your community and stuff and now learning being a woman creator, just like you said, you know, that's something that's near and dear to your heart. So tell me a little bit about that and, and some struggles and, and how you deal with it. Yeah, I mean, I think off the bat, when somebody thinks of gamer girl or, you know, a girl creating content, it's they have to be made up, you know, they have to be mm -hmm. um, pretty all the time or it's hot tub streams or it's like they're showing their boobs or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, it's very superficial. And I don't think that women creators get the chance for people to just see them how they want to be seen. A lot of the times people come in with expectations as a woman creator. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important for women to just be women. Like they yeah. don't have to be anything like guys and guys can just kind of come on and do whatever they want, you know, and they'll complain that women only get views because they have tits. Right. Or because, you know, guys want to sleep with them, like that kind of thing. But the truth is, like, guys can become famous for being themselves. And I feel like women struggle to do that more because there's all this pressure to be something that you're not just to yeah. become famous, you know? And so I think it's easier for guys to become famous for what they actually want to become famous for mm -hmm. than women. So I think that it's really important to talk about that kind of stuff and to kind of normalize women just being themselves in the gaming scene and in the creator space um, and just being able to do whatever the fuck they want. And if people enjoy the content, they enjoy the content. And if you don't, you don't have to tear them down for it. You know, that's what I hate the most is when you see women genuinely being themselves and being authentic and being, you know, unique. And then you have these people, not just guys, other women too, everybody does it. You have people coming in, tearing them down for it because they're not stereotypical, you know? Mm -hmm. It it really, it irks me because I'm just like, let them be them, bro. Like, <laughs> you just gotta let that person do what they want to do, put whatever they want to put out in the world, and hopefully they find a community that loves them for them, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. And I would fully agree. I don't disagree with single one of those statements. It's very important that they normalize it. So, you know, with all of that, mm -hmm. 
being said, and with your experience and everything that you you've happened, I mean, clearly you've met tons of women creators in your time. You know, good experiences mm-hmm. and bad experiences. So, to to the newer friends that you've made and to other women creators that could be watching this, you know, what is your advice for them for those that struggle to start the stream or post a cool picture of themselves or just post a yeah. little TikTok that could get posted, you know, out of context or something. I mean, it's, you're, you've heard it before and you're probably going to roll your eyes at me saying it, but just do it, you know, like mm-hmm. fucking Nike, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> and that's something that I've struggled with personally. Um, cause you know, you always have those voices in your head saying, oh, well, what if this, what if that, you know, but you just kind of have to do it and see what happens because otherwise you're never going to know what could happen you could post something and it could get zero likes or you could post something and it go viral and that you know kickstart your career but if you never post anything or you never post something that you really want to post but you don't know if you're going to get views on it or likes on it then what's the point you're never going to know um and i think women especially having a community or finding people that will support you no matter what is a really, really big thing. Um, and it's hard for women because there's a lot of fake people out there who mm-hmm. have ulterior motives for becoming friends with women. And so I know it's hard to find those people, but, you know, Twitter is a great place. <laughs> yeah, The gaming community is a great place. The kit community is a great place. Um, there's a lot of little different communities out there and I think you just kind of have to start putting yourself out there and trying to meet new people and making friends and networking. Um, because it's real, that's really all it, all it really is, is networking and finding your people. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And I feel like, you know, fast forwarding a little bit on on the topic, you know, still on the topic of women creators, you know, like for Mm -hmm. you you ended up having COD as your mainstream. And I I genuinely feel like, well, let me, let me take this back. Cold War and Vanguard did normalize a little bit of female competitors and to be able to have their tournaments. But I really feel like it was really normalized with this COD um, Mm -hmm. specifically for women. I think it was the first, they had their first LAN event, you know, with this COD. Um, So how did it go? Not only the fact of being a woman creator, figuring out other women and all that kind of stuff, but now you're on the main stage with other women having people judge you and say different things and stuff like that. I mean, how did that come to be? I mean, first, how did you get into something like that? And second, yeah. how did that formulate it being like a passion for something you wanted to wake up and practice? Um. So I first started playing competitive Call of Duty and Cold War, but I wasn't playing all female. Mm-hmm. Um, I was playing in like really small leagues, um, kind of like you had talked about earlier, joining right. a team, um, and all you had to do was one v one somebody. Like yeah. that's how I kind of got into a league, um, and I played that for a while. And then I, I honestly don't remember how I found the female pro circuit. I'm pretty sure I just found it on Twitter one mm-hmm. day. Um, but the female pro circuit is an all-female Call of Duty League, and I started playing in that. I played in that for, I think, two to three seasons. Um, I don't play it in it, in, play in it anymore, but mm-hmm. um, I think that like group has really built the female scene up and made opportunities for women in the female scene because mm-hmm. there have been... Like, the Female Pro League um, has been around, but it just never really popped off. took off. Um, and I hate to say it, but I think another big reason that the female scene is more known now is because of all of the drama attached to it. Because people, especially on Twitter, love uh, drama. They yeah, love and, and it got drama. dragged out a lot more than you know normal it did. would. No, it no, matter did. How, no matter how biased you want to be about it, it was. I mean, I've seen the drama. Yeah. And and it's like, I I don't want to say anything negative about the female community because I genuinely love the female COD community. And I think that it's a great opportunity for women to get into the COD scene without feeling, you know, judged by men for it. Right. But 
at the same time, you also have to be aware that there is a lot of drama in that scene, and it's very easy to be sucked into it. So I think the most important thing about if you really want to go into the female Call of Duty scene is to just, you know, be humble. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And just kind of try not to feed into the drama, because that's something that that I hate the most, is that that's what the female scene for COD is becoming, is just kind of a drama fest. And that's the only reason people watch it, it seems like, because of the drama. And so I think once we kind of get away from that and we get back to, you know, what everybody actually wants to see, which is COD, um, then it'll get even bigger. Because, I mean, you see now they have um, WXC, the Alley Mm -hmm. Cat started, um, which was a really cool opportunity because, you know, she has a big platform that now the CDL is showcasing women playing Call of Duty, which is a really cool opportunity. Um, But again, because of all of the drama that's happened, that's the only reason people are talking about it, you know? And so I love, I love, I love, I love that there is a space for women to play Call of Duty. I'm just waiting for the day that it becomes about Call of Duty. Yeah, not about drama. No, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I would fully agree. I mean, I obviously not only the fact can I not touch on the topic because I'm not a a woman and b that invested <laughs> to it, or and also I just don't want to give it the credibility to shine light to bring past issues up because if for whatever mm-hmm. reason you're watching this and you're a part of that drama, it's in the past regardless. Yeah, just no, I'm not trying to bring you know. it back. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I get that, but what I, what I'm getting at is that. The thing that makes me annoyed about the the whole grand scheme of it all, which I know you could easily, after I say this, anybody a part of it, be like, well, you didn't know the drama. You didn't know what went down. Like, I get it. I know. But, like, hypothetically, when the female pro league had started in Cold War, that's all the topics was. One of these days, we're going to see a woman creator be on the main stage and make that mark for women gaming. And mm-hmm. eventually, we finally had this, and we had our first LAN event, um, or you guys, not really we, um, you know, had had that and being able to get there and it just ended up unfortunately taking the wrong turn. And I, it, it was it's it's really weird because I feel like it was a step back, but it was also still a step. You know, it was kind of like a minor step back where it's like they still made tons of progress, but it could have went farther, but it didn't. Like the first female land that they just had for MW2. Mm-hmm. I, I think all in all, I wasn't there. I, I didn't go, um, but I had I knew pretty much everybody that was there. Um, and it was for the female pro circuit, which I was a part of that previous season right. and a couple seasons before. Um, so all in all, I would say it was a success. I think it definitely sh- um, brought a lot of new people to the female scene. Um, but obviously that there was a lot of drama that happened there as well. Mm. Um, but I think it was a really cool opportunity for women to go play on LAN. Yeah. And I wish I could have gone. I wish I could have gone. I really do. Because that is such a cool opportunity. Even though I wasn't really playing competitively anymore. Just knowing that there was an event made for women to play COD. Like, it was a very cool thing to see. It was a very cool experience. And I'm really glad that it's becoming more normalized for women to play COD. And for events and tournaments like Twitter tournaments to be hosted strictly for women. And I think it's really cool to see that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always nice and and definitely I would not disagree at all. I mean, there's been so many supportive women um, Mm -hmm. that not only the fact is just ramped up and you're seeing new women come out that you've not seen before, but there's some that's gained a lot more. um, uh, What's the word? Um, I guess comfortness. There's a more like impact word that I would like to use, but there's a lot more comforting women players and streamers that's kind of got out of their shell and, and found that in themselves to be able to kind of be themselves and do what they wanted to do, which is sick to see. Um, yeah. So touching base on on everything else, you know, we had all the conversations about your past and and you know bits and pieces of what you love about the women you know community and stuff. So I want to touch base before we kind of get ready to wrap things up on the last topic of the, the plus gamers, you know, the plus size gamers mm-hmm. that you wanted to, to bring up, you know, take me through that and just kind of, you know, let me know how you feel about that in your opinions. Yeah. Um, so I think just like women in gaming is a very, you know, dear 
topic to my heart, so is plus-sized people in gaming. Mm -hmm. Because I think plus-sized people, just in general, even in life, are afraid to take up space. Because they're afraid that they already take up too much space physically, mm -hmm. that they're afraid to take up any anything else, you know? Yeah. And they're also, I feel like, not seen as people a lot of the times, and people forget that there are real emotions and that there is a real person underneath everything, you know? Um, and I consider myself a plus-size woman, you know? And mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are also plus-sized um, that make content, but the thing is, is that w they're more afraid to show their face, they're more afraid to show their bodies, they're more afraid to show, like, who they actually are, because they're terrified of people judging them for how they look, or judging yeah. their bodies, or stuff like that. And I know that other people have that fear, too. I know it's not just plus-size right. people that have those fears, but it's... It's more common for plus-size people, I think, because it's so normalized to hate on plus-size people in our day's, you know, society. Um, and, you know, because people always talk about, like, oh, thick. I love, I love thick queens. Mm -hmm. I love thick girls. Um, but then when they actually see a picture of a plus-size girl, they're, you know, yeah. all these names come out. So I just think it's really important for plus size people to know that they can take up space sure. and that they can make content just like any other person can and you know not everybody's going to like you but that's literally everybody like not everybody's going to like everybody you know <laughs> you're always going to have haters you're always going to have people who will talk badly about you but mm. what i've found is they do that because they're insecure about something within themselves. Or they end up being they're jealous. Unhappy. Yeah, they're either jealous. They're jealous that a fat bitch <laughs> is getting more, you know, viewership than they are, you know? Yeah. Or they're getting more opportunities than they are. And it's not because we're fat or plus sized. It's because we're confident in ourselves. It's because we're kind to other people. And it's because we're real, you know? And I think that it's really cool to see the plus size people who really don't give a fuck, you know? Like, they just kind of own it and they do whatever the hell they want to do. Um, and those are my, like, that's kind of who I aspire to be. I've gotten a lot better about it since I started streaming. And you can even see, like, from when I first started streaming to now, I'm a lot more confident Mm -hmm. in myself yeah and in like showing myself on stream and that kind of thing i used to be definitely terrified of like having a bad angle and people being able to like see my chin yeah. or something like that so like i would before stream i would like make sure that i like knew my bad angles so <laughs> they wouldn't turn that way and it was exhausting it was absolutely exhausting and so i think you know becoming more confident in myself and realizing that it doesn't really doesn't really matter if I'm plus size or not. Um, that there's going to be people who love me for me. And as long as I love myself and I'm confident in myself and the content that I put out, that doesn't really matter if I'm plus size or not. Doesn't Definitely. really matter if I'm a woman or not. 100%. It just matters that I'm a creator and I love what I do and I love who I am. And... I hope that I find people who love that as well. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's awful and pathetic the way that they get so differentized, you know, when, when all yeah. of that comes to light. It's it's awful. It's so stupid. It is. Um, but I think to, to add on to that, I think, you know, per your topic, you know, not like trying to say like, you know, you're a great woman. I mean, obviously you are. You're an awesome woman. But I think it's very important for you um, that you recognize that you're confident and that you do all these things and mm -hmm. you preach because you are technically an advocate for, you know, what mm -hmm. you believe in and, and what you're passionate yes. about. And I think that's a big point to add on to other creators that are scared is, you know, you easily get that, you know, pat on the back behind you. Of like, if I can do it, so can you, like what's stopping you? Like I'm no different than you are. And I think yep. I guarantee you there's been a lot of other creators like that, that instantly 
are more vulnerable and open up just because they see that you succeed and that you're confident. So I think that it's a, mm-hmm. an amazing thing that that's what you love doing and that's what you're passionate about. And I don't want you to change that because you're an advocate you. for people that don't want to say it. And they just sit there and they watch your streams and like, okay, one day I can be like kinetic. And you're like, fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Of course you can. <laughs> so yeah. So I, I've appreciated all of our conversations. I'm really glad that we've, yeah, you know, too. raised awareness for everything for, for mental health, getting your story out there. And I'm glad that we was kind of able to take back and, you know, look at the old times or where we came from pre COVID and, and now this and the gaming space that we're in. Um, so yes. to end it off here, you know, is there anything that you have coming up, anything that you're excited about, any plans um, for you or your community? Yeah. Um, so for everybody who's in my community, who knows me and who knows kind of what's been going on the past month, I haven't streamed in about a month because I had emergency surgery and I've been under recovery, but my first stream back is going to be this Friday. So I'm very, very excited about that. And I have missed streaming <laughs> so much. It's like a little chunk of me has been like torn out yeah. of my body. So I'm excited to be, you know, getting back to streaming, getting back to making content. So this Friday, I'm back, baby. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, I, I could I could only imagine. I mean, I've not really been through anything like that. Well, I guess that's kind of a lot because I did have a small moment where I had to quit gaming for a little bit. Um, but it, it is, it is an awful feeling to be able to do it what is. you love, talk to people every single day. And then you just have to unfortunately ditch them out of nowhere. And, and the unfortunate thing is if you have to leave so abruptly, you don't get to say the goodbyes to everybody that you want to. So then when you come back, they're like, what the fuck, Kinetic, where'd you go? And then you have to re-explain <laughs> yeah. your story over and over and over and over. Um, yep, so yeah, exactly. but I, I think it's very important that people normalize these things, that they understand that everybody is equal and just the day mm-hmm. that everybody can be happy and create their own content without worrying about other people. I mean, this, the, the community will be the strongest it's ever been. Um, exactly. is there anything that you would like to say before we end off here? Um, you know, for everybody else who knows me going for respawn recruits, top Shout five. Out. I just made top 200 this past week, going for top 150 next week. So I'm excited to see some kinetic vouchers on Twitter. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, just that I love everybody who supports me and that I'm really excited to see where my content creation journey goes. And I've got a lot of fun stuff planned and I'm coming back with a vengeance. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and and I appreciate that. And, you know, congrats again. I, I literally told you before we started this, I was like, all right, I'll start off by saying that. And now I'm saying it, like at the very end, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, con- congrats. It, it's sick. And everybody else that's on there, congratulations to you. Just keep it up, yeah. keep that mindset and just aspire to be a better creator and, and you'll never lose. Um, 100%. so yeah. So I really appreciate you being on. Thank you so, yeah, so much for taking the time, hanging out, sharing your story, normalizing mental health for women and other creators, and especially plus size creators and stuff that you're passionate about. Um, it's yes. it's very normalized that they need to understand that everything's going to be okay. Just do mm-hmm. it. Nike, get out there and <laughs> Just do it. be Nike. yourself. Um, exactly. So yeah, guys, this has been episode nine, I think. We're almost at double digit episodes. This is crazy. Um, all the people that have supported us, thank you so fucking much. It, it truly means the world. I just want to create a safe space and just let people hear their stories. There's no holds bars against it, no background stuff, no weird things in the long run. I'm not using anybody as a stepping stone. Like I just I want to take my mindset and I want to be able to let other creators share the same thing. So for anybody that supports us, Thank you so much. Shout out to anybody in Kinetic's friend group or her community. You guys are awesome. Keep her sane. She's a great woman. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a rest of, great rest of your day. Holy, this is Feeds <laughs> Mindset. My name is Feeds, and I'm out, guys. <laughs>